Hello and welcome to WGLNA Season 2, Week Number 3. Tonight is the final night of group play. I'm your host, Joshua Clutch Gray, joined on the set by Randall Rukel Holcomb. Now, tonight is the last night of matches. Tomorrow night will be the, the decider, really, the tiebreakers and then the playoffs. Tonight, we're going to have a pretty good idea of who are going to be the top four teams, at least making it to Vegas, depending on the points. And we'll know the story for most of these teams before they try to compete for the $100,000 prize pool happening this November 16th and 17th at Treasure Island in Las Vegas. Randall, I'm excited, and I'm excited to see where we're going to end up at the end of the night tonight. I, uh, I, I don't know what to think, man. This is going to be really intense for so many teams. The pressure is on, and it is a de huge decider. Even some teams, the out, like for example, Fulcrum, Cat Fast Nation, not going to be a big thing. But later, some of the matches that we're going to see later this evening will have effects on even other teams that they didn't even play just because of the way ties are going to work out. we got seven-point ties, nine-point ties, even 12-point ties right now. It's just crazy. It is going to be crazy, but that's why we're here, and everyone in chat is going to have a great time tonight. Tomorrow we'll have a better idea how the schedule is going to be towards the end of tonight once we try to determine who will need tiebreakers. And, of course, the playoffs, which will be the fourth and fifth place matches, uh, the deciders between those two. So, for example, the fourth place of Alpha Division will be up against the fifth place of Bravo Division and vice versa. Let's go ahead and jump into yesterday, what happened with the different matches. Hammer Time defeated Simplistic. River of Blood took out War and Peace. Barely, one of the biggest comebacks in the league. No Limit took out the Cunninghams. Fulcrum Gaming destroyed Game Over. And Civil Tankers won against the Cazadores. Some fun matches last night. We saw more teams be a little bit more engaged, I would say, except on Abbey, which has turned into be a lot of uh, slower map play for that map, at least for the second, well, at least the last two weeks. Uh, yeah, just teams playing. losing confidence on that map. Yeah. That's, that's really what it is, just about confidence. Teams not wanting to risk something on that map when they don't feel that they have the edge. Well, there was one team that brought a lot of confidence to their matchup, and that was with two KV-5s oh, in one of our highlights. Let's go ahead and jump into our backtrack. And they are pushing straight across the tracks, just something you never, ever see. And they are going to leave Speed Weaponry on cap, while three tanks, Artivore, Mega Earth, and Bryant, are going to push across cap. Schooly is booking it south as quickly as humanly possible. There's a bounce on Mega Earth, and NYPD bouncing one shot. And there goes Tanker 91 already in this fight. NYPD has a great flank with the AMX 51. Now Drynitz is one hit away. And the IS3 tries to line up the shot. Bryant, will he be able to take it, or will he go down? And McGirth cleans it up. Ooh, looks like it's a bounce from Drynitz on McGirth. So Bryant's going to get the cleanup kill. Speed weaponry now, and the KV-5 is going to be on the chase against Zazie. You know, at the same time, the T1's Whiskey Dot and Waffles were even able to get a win in a T1 fight to the north. So wins on all fronts by Simplistic. They look so dominant in this. And you know what I think it was? It was those KV-5s, which yep. was the hit points. The hit points will finish from across the way. And another shot from Tanker 91, leaving Bryant 21, the only one left alive. However, Wait, the cap there was a reset. Uh, if, if I... Can a 5100 actually reduce this cap when he gets on? Three plus eight seconds left. That will be enough time. Can Bryant get a shot off to make this go to a draw? Looks like he won't. And that yes, is the blue race is captured. Hammer time with one second to spare is able to get three victory points. 100 and Nip misses a shot against Soviet. Hugo. And so it's still left alive. Red base still under attack with 10 more seconds. Relix could be the one to win this out for Fulcrum Gaming. Hugo Maximus is two shots away from beginning destroyed. Taking Daka gets destroyed by Hugo. Hugo has a beautiful play, and Relix is able to get the victory. Relix and Friction, two T1s getting the crucial cap to win. Now, to be fair, Relics did have more capture points compared to Relics. You spot or on. compared to Friction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Friction was there, and without him, Without those two together, working like battle buddies for life, yeah, that might not have gone to victory. Keep the T1s alive, and that's what they're able to do in those type of matches. Hugo Maximus, of course, with that last shot, trying to keep them away from the T1s. And Fulcrum Gaming, again, showing everyone how tanks is played. Let's go ahead and jump into today's matches. And speaking of Fulcrum Gaming, they're going to be the first match tonight against Cat Fast Nation. Afterwards, we're going to have Hammer Time versus Casadores, Wreak Havoc versus Pub Stars. Game over is going to take on Bernal Empires. And the final match of group play will be Simp against Nerve. Looking forward to those matches. Do you think there's going to be any upsets tonight? Yes, maybe Nerve on Simp. Nerve versus Simp. I mean, Nerve is a fantastic team. They've really lost confidence. They could bring it back. It's, 
I, it depends on where their team is able to come from because you've seen their play. It of course. It was a little bit lacking simp, a very difficult team to beat. They're just, they have such a strong passive play. Teams cannot break uh, a lot of their just defensive positions, and they could bring it to a draw and still make it to Vegas very easily. It is possible. It is possible. But one of the biggest changes that has happened is no longer having the eight-point rule. And a lot of these teams have performed differently because of it. They've got adjusted to it, and that's why I think these teams are performing better in week number two and week number three for season two. But, Randall, why don't you go ahead and detail for us the 7x42 and shootout rules. Yep, and like Clutch just mentioned, there is no eight-point rule. So no, notice on the board next to me, no eight-point rule this season. Fantastic rule adjustment. Seven players per team, 42 points allotted to each team, and each tank is equal in points to its tier. Highest tier is eight. And, uh, for example, guys, IS-3 is eight points, T1 Cunningham, one point. You guys can fill in the blanks on that one. Now, we have a best of five for each series, and if we don't see a winner by the end of five battles, we'll go to a shootout. And on a shootout, we're going to play it just like 742, same picking as everything, but we're going to go to Malinovka, line him up on three and the five line, and have him shoot it out. Admin will declare one to fire. If anyone shoots before then, we will have a team uh, disqualified from winning, and a point will be awarded to the winner. And only one point will be awarded, not three. For a best of five match series, it'll be three points for the winner. That's what these teams want. They do not want to go into a shootout because the loss of two points, even though they could win the shootout, they will only earn one point, and points are what's going to determine who's going to be joining us in Las Vegas. And to see the points so far, let's go ahead and bring up the standings as they currently are right now. Fulcrum Gaming in uh, the Alpha Division is at 5 and 1. The 15 league points. Cunningham's tying them up 5 and 2. Fulcrum Gaming's last match is tonight. So they have a good chance of becoming the number one team for their division. No limit at 10 league points. 4 and 3. They're going to face, uh, they had their final match already. Game over. At fourth place right now with seven league points, three and three. Let's go ahead and look at the bottom half of the bracket. Pub Stars right now at seven league points with three and three. Bernal Empire, six league points at two and four. Wreak Havoc at six league points. And Cap Fast Nation has one win under their belt, but the rest are losses. They unfortunately will not be joining us to Vegas. Rook Hill, why don't you go in detail? The Bravo Division. Would love to. Leading the way is Simp with 16 points, one shootout under their belt. Uh, they play one more time tonight. Simple Tankers have played all their matches, and they're at 15 points. Hammer Time at 12 with uh, one more match. River of Blood is done at 12. Nerve plays one more time with nine points. Casadori, six. Simplistic, four. War and Peace not able to get a single win this season. Tough. Very tough, tough, tough season for them, but we do look forward to seeing them try to make it into season number three. Now, Simple Tankers perform very well. And we have a special surprise for everyone. Joining us on the set is none other than Pub Whisper from the Simple Tankers. Hey guys, what's up? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, getting ready for Vegas, making our trip plans and everything. Everyone uh, pretty much ready to go? Already start packing and everything? Yeah, we're ready to go. Uh, just making the hotel arrangements and the flights. So Are we'll you going to use that little code we have? Oh yeah, we're going to use <laughs> that. Get that uh, discount good. for our game. Good, good. Now, tonight you're going to be detailing between uh, some of the matches here at the end of the match. Yep. Your thoughts, your feelings on what happened. Do you feel this is a unique opportunity for not only yourself but for your team to see not, not only the studio but to watch every match tonight? Are you going to be taking notes? Are you going to be watching the different play they're going to bring? It'll be interesting to get to see the uh, different perspective you guys get with the observers. So, yeah, I'll be definitely looking at it. All right. All right. It will have a definitely a different perspective when you can fly <laughs> around on that free cam. Well, we're glad that you're here. We're also glad that everyone else is joining us right now via chat, and we want to remind everybody about our betting system. And if you have any questions about betting, go ahead and ask the people that have, are, have been here for a while that are veterans of betting, but also we have a bot that gives the instructions. But we have standings for the betting, and these standings are going to be very, very crucial here because tomorrow we're going to reward the top 10 people that are in the betting system leaderboard as we jump into that leaderboard right now now these people cannot be players they cannot be uh pretty much players we know who the players yeah, are but none of the pros can get points exactly none of the pros can get points uh big dave's ranch is leading right now with nine thousand and one uh, since big dave's ranch you know he, he he's involved with tanks because he sells tanks i don't think he needs gold so right now the one that's in the lead is glyuan that's a 
Heck of a name. No idea what it means. But he's currently leading the boards at 2,160. Below him, Son of Hail does not count since he is a player. Iron Horse Smitty at 1,350. Now, the top 10 players, or the top 10 people on the leaderboard that are not players will receive 2,000 gold in seven days of premium. The very top person will also receive one premium tank. So make sure to get your bets in. This is the last time you're going to have those bets declared, at least for group play. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have to confer with our production team to see if betting will be happening because these matches that we're going to schedule tomorrow are tiebreakers and playoffs. They're not part of our, regu our regular uh, scheduled season. But also, uh, another thing you need to take notes on, as we m mentioned before with Pub Whisper, is Las Vegas happening November 16th and 17th. If you'd like to go, you definitely need to come out there. Season 1 was a lot of fun. Make sure to use the promo code WARGAME, one word, right below Rootkill, WARGAME, for the group discount. Also, follow us on Twitter at WGLNA, Facebook.com slash WGLNA, and also the website WGLNA.com. A lot of things to remember, but guess what? When you say it over and over and over again... You tend to memorize it, yeah, and it it's all pretty simple. You. It's all pretty simple, WGLNA, but also Wargame. Make sure to use that discount code when you get your hotel at Treasure Island in Las Vegas. Well, we're almost ready to have Fulcrum Gaming versus Cat Fast Nation. We're going to take a quick commercial break. The first match of the last day for group play begins after this. Welcome back to WGLNA. We're about ready to have our first matchup tonight, Fulcrum Gaming versus Cap Fascination. Fulcrum Gaming is only one loss under their belt. That was against Wreak Havoc, the very first match of Season 2. Feels like yesterday, but it was actually a while ago if you go by World of Tanks time. Yeah, esports time is longer than normal time. I mean, we've been in esports time for maybe about 20 years now. More or less feels that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so their only loss was against Wreak Havoc. They did have a win against Pub Stars, Cunningham's, No Limit, Burnal Empires, and Game Over. Now, just go according to the statistics right now, they are favored to win against Cat Fast Nation. However, Cat Fast Nation surprised a lot of people when they had their first and only win so far in league play against Wreak Havoc. So technically, since Cat Fast Nation beat Wreak Havoc, they vicariously have beaten the only team that has won against the number one team from season it's one. It's the transitive property. <laughs> That's just the way it works. And Wreak Havoc has lost to a lot of teams now. Yeah. So transitive property, a lot of people have beaten Fulcrum Gaming. But Fulcrum Gaming doesn't look to, uh, to have taken that to heart, and they have not been losing. No, they have been the tightest team performing in this league so far, counting season one and season two. But let's go ahead and take it to the face-off between the two team captains of Fulcrum Gaming and Cap Fast Nation. Victorocious, we're going to start with you. I think that's you underneath that mask. Are you prepared for Halloween? Um, actually, uh, Victorocious is no longer available. Um, after a specific order from Mac G and Endo from Sim Clan, uh, we dropped that fool. We got rid of him. He's no good. I see. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, so, so who who is currently leading the team right now? Oh well, I'm going to be taking over. I'm I'm Boxer, by the way. Um, after we dropped him off in Lakeville, we took a nice little stroll down the middle road. We uh, brought Admiral Drake along. He grabbed his hand, you know, took him down right into the lake. So I'm going to be taking over now. That's how things roll now. Okay. You Boxer know? will be taking over Cat Fast Nation. Well, Boxer, how do you feel about your team's performance in the league so far and about this matchup against Fulcrum Gaming? Well, it's been atrocious. That's how we dropped Victor Oshis. I mean, he was just no good. Um, we did fairly well against Red Havoc, but, uh, you know, I, I, got, I got money on my side, so uh, we're feeling pretty good today. Boxer has money on his side. Fulcrum Gaming, Nagatron, what do you have on your side? Uh, we have extensive Minecraft experience, uh, so we are very accustomed to dealing with creepers. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Anything to say, <laughs> uh, Boxer? That's, that's really hurtful. You know, I, I feel like my... Uh, the square sides of my body are, are itching a little bit after such comments. It's a little hurtful. How good are you at the robot? The robot? Yes. What robot? What are you talking about? I'm not a robot. I ain't no robot fool. Okay. I've just, never known a robot to have that much bling, so he's probably he's probably right. He's probably right. I yeah. see. I see. Except for Bender. Bender was one of my favorite robots. All right, Fulcrum. Oh, you got me there. You're five and one right now. This is the final matchup you have for the league. How would you rate yourselves? for season number two compared to season number one? That's hard to say. I think the overall level of competition has gone up in season two. I think we have played better than we ever did in season one and also worse. So overall, I think we'll decide that in Vegas. 
All right. Do you have any words for Cat Fast Nation before we start this match? Uh, sure. You guys are making a lot of progress throughout the season. I've enjoyed watching your strategies, and I'm excited to see what you bring tonight. Thank you very much. Cat Fast, any more of a response? Um, yeah, I just got three words for Negatron. I mean, first of all, thank you for the compliments. Nice to be here uh, facing off with you. But uh, three words. Cash, YOLO, swag. Wait, that's not Endo, is it? Can't argue um, with it. Um, no, um, I, I've never spoken to Endo before. I, I do not know that guy. Okay. Uh, mm. Fulcrum Gaming, you have the higher seed. So heads or tails? Heads. Heads will be the call. And that's what the coin It is heads. Map choice or defer? Defer. They will defer. Cat Fast Nation, Boxer, what will be your choice? Give me a moment here. Uh, we're going to go with... Uh, we're going to go with Steps. Steps will be choice number one for Cat Fast Nation. What will be your spawn location, Fulcrum Gaming? North. North side on Steps for Fulcrum, Cat Fast Nation, with their new team, Captain Boxer. We'll be taking the south. Gentlemen and Creeper, best of luck. Oh, oh. Thank you. Taking a look at tanks. There's a tank down for Cat Fascination, and they will have a Pershing T69 3 1390s and only a single T1 Cunningham. That hurts against Fulcrum, who are going to have a Pershing a T69 and three 1390s. Same tier 8s, but they get an extra T1. F0X and Relics together versus Victor Oceus. It's going to be, a, oh, sorry, that is a Boxer. Boxer. Yes. Boxer. Well, it looks like that Creeper got a little bit too close to one of the tanks and blew it up, unfortunately, for Cat Fascination. It does happen. Soviet's going to be leading the charge here from the north side in the 1390, taking point for the rest of Fulcrum. And he is able to see Yokobo and Rummy in the 1390 and the T69, reverse respectively. Victorious in the T1 will be joining that posse of Cat Fast Nation, but they're not going to push in against the position of Fulcrum Gaming because the T69 and the Pershing can move into a hold down position, especially Hugo Maximus in the Pershing, and be able to snipe any approach coming out of Cat Fast Nation. Yeah, it's a wonderful scout run on the open by Rummy, spotted out in the in, uh, most of the lead Fulcrum Gaming tanks have forced Soviet to back off knowing he was spotted, not able to get any kind of uh, sneaky little positions. I'm pretty sure Soviet was going for the dip in D8. And actually, he's going to go there now, it looks like. And he's going to go there unspotted. A Jackie gets spotted going there, though. And that will spoil Soviet's approach because now you go bananas to the wall hosts and the rest of the members of Cat Nation will be expecting that attack. Now, Soviet can continue to push down this section, and he will pop up at the bottom of this valley. And he sees T69 in Pershing. Is he able to line a shot? One shot rings out from Soviet as he barely missed. Bananas to the wall the also shot. puts out fire, but no one is connecting yet. We've got numerous tanks moving around. It's clear Fulcrum is getting ready for an attack, and there's Relics going down as he attempts to spot the positions of Cap Fast Nation. Now, Godzilla Mode is going to go in and try and find that remaining T1 F0X who was spotted before and took a little bit of damage, but now a 1390 might be out of position, and we might see this even up or actually go into the favor of Cap Fast Nation as they take down F0X in the T1. Yes, Godzilla Mode is not going to back off, and there is no good engagement for Fulcrum Gaming. They are in no position for that kind of engagement. 1390 is far too close, and now Victorocious in the T1, where we have Relics and F0X dead for T1s on Fulcrum Gaming. Dodoma took a little bit of hits against his T69, but Hugo Maximus, his battle buddy at the front, is able to land a hit against Gamers Rig. The bounce, huge bounce off to Doma's front. And the T69 Yokobo takes two more big hits here from the T69 and the Pershing. Hugo's gonna push up. Jackie Rudo's gonna focus on Yokobo here. But the rest of the tanks for Cap Fast Nation focus on Jackie Rudo, and that was a beautiful play by them to focus on one tank and get the kill. And now Nagatron will go down as other members of Fulcrum are engaging on another group. Bananas the Wall is about to go down. Game is rigged, also about to go down there. Also Soviet is yep, going to go down. Yep, they both shot just about the same time, killed each other. Uh, more or less. Bananas to the Wall host kills Game is Rigged. Or Soviet kills Game is Rigged. Bananas to the Wall host destroyed Soviet. Soviet got that last shot just in time. Rummy still left alive here, but Dodoma lands another great hit against his 1390. Another one 
113 left in the 1390. Is the Doma out? No, he waits for the shot and is able to take it. He gets the kill against the 1390. Godzilla mode, the only one left alive for Cat Fast Nation. Because he's going to try to hide behind this rock. And he has two Fulcrum tanks to deal with. One an autoloader, the T-69. He may be done reloading in just Not a second. Not quite yet. Dodoma should go. Oh, he is reloaded, maybe. And it should be only maybe a second or two before Dodoma is reloaded. But he's going to go for a ram. But Godzilla mode stops, cutting him short. I like Dodoma trying to cut off Godzilla mode from any type of approach he can make against the Pershing. He does absorb some of those shots, but the Pershing left alive here. He's going to have to get a nice hit against Hugo Godzilla Hugo blows mode. a shot into uh, one of the dead tanks, Victor Rocious, and that might, will allow Godzilla mode to get away with a sliver of health, 70 hit points. Godzilla mode is going to be able to escape Hugo Maximus hot pursuit, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to catch a 1390. 1390 is a fast tank, Pershing not quite as fast, highly mobile, but Godzilla mode might get away, Hugo. Don't go into the valley, Hugo. You know he's not going to be there. He's going to need to get on the crest of the hill. And, and he's spotted. Line up a shot. Oh, Hugo. Hugo could do this. He's got it. He's got it. Yes, Hugo gets the kill. And it's not going to be a draw. It's going to be a victory for Fulcrum Gaming. Beautiful shot from the Persian and Hugo Maximus there. All 1390s with a single T69. However, they will still be up a single T1. Where is the T1 from Catfast Nation? It's not there. Yeah. He's not coming. He's just not going to show up tonight. Very unfortunate. That's a huge disadvantage. T1s are, are far more important than most people realize. Viewers should realize that the T1 is responsible for a lot of capping, uh, vision, and last night we saw Castor's even sack a few of them for as a sewer scout for spotting that definitely paid off. Paid off indeed. And the Suez Scout though means that you can't cap like Relics and Friction did. In their series we saw last night. Final matches for all these teams because today is the last day of group play. Dodoma is gonna be at the center here. He will spot out. Game is rigged. Shot missed from Dodoma. He's gonna be kicking himself because his stats are get lowered because of that. Nagatron taking a hit from Rummy. Just getting, uh, just falling for that little bait. Rummy spotting Nagatron out, recognizing he can wait on the corner. Nagatron thinking Rummy may have left. Wow, Dodoma is going to go down to the 1390 at 2 uh, Yokobo. He pushed too far out, got Zilla mode in the 1390, had a great flank on him. He was playing too reckless. Yeah. I don't think, uh, I don't think Fulcrum Gaming has played Cliff all that much. A lot of other teams actually might have more experience. And even Cat Fascination may have more experience then Fulcrum Gaming on this map. That actually could have been a very smart choice. They may have done the research on this one. Well, Hugo Maximus and his T-69 is not going to let anything pass through these rocks. Game is rigged at 867, 1100. Did take a little bit of damage. But Soviet took more. And him and the 1390 just on top of that mountain, he's going to have to be cautious and careful because if two chariots go down, doesn't matter how good friction... Nagatron, Jackie... Ru oh, sorry, Rummy and Jackie Getting Ruto are engaging... Rummy not taking any hit. Jackie Ruto down to 686. I think Nagatron is there as well, but he remains unspotted. This is uh, very unfortunate. Oh, Godzilla is going to take down F0X. He pushed up Jackie Ruto down to 459, down to 198. And a shot bounces on him? I don't know. Rummy might. No, he doesn't get the finishing shot as Nagatron is moving up and taking down Godzilla mode to 85 hit points. This engagement does kind of to stall for a moment as Nagatron and Remy square off. Well, so you have some rock. reloads happening, but Hugo and Soviet are getting pushed in by Game is Rigged and Yokobo and Bananas to the wall host. Hugo Max is going to get surrounded. Now it's up to Nagatron and Jackie Rudo, and they're both so low on health. And he takes down... Uh, who does Jackie Rudo just take down? That was... I missed this. Godzilla mode. And now he's going to try and escape reloading, but a fight which I missed the fight elsewhere. It's gone. To Cat Fascination, they won a fight out against Fulcrum yeah, Gaming. Nagatron and Jackie tracked just, themselves going down the hill. I just detailed it. That's what that's oh, what happened on the other side. I missed out on that. I'm just so focused on this fight with the 1390s. I thought you were following it too. No, no, no. I was staying over there with Soviet and the rest of his crew in the center, and they got completely surrounded. And now Cat Fascination's on the chase. Nagatron's the only one left alive, and they're gonna get this uh, clean up unless Nagatron can pull out something that we've never seen before. 
we definitely haven't we've seen some close situations and some interesting and that's battles. it cat fast nation takes battle number two over fulcrum gaming it's not going to be a 3-0 folks cat fast Welcome back to WGLNA. Let's go ahead and jump into battle number three on Prohorovka. Fulcrum versus Cat Fast Nation. Like a godsend, Angel of Darkness has actually joined the team, and another T1 will join Catfast Nation. They will bring a T32, a T69, three 1390s, and now they have the two T1s. Fulcrum Gaming, a Pershing, two T69s, and two 1390s. I wonder if Angel of Darkness had a stipulation, an ultimatum. I'm not gonna join you guys unless you take down one game of Fulcrum. And then they did, and he went, okay, I'm in, let's do this. Confidence re restored. Confidence restored. Eyes and ears restored for Cat Fascination in the south as the blue team, red team. Godzilla mode Fulcrum. scouting out, but somehow he's going to miss numerous members of Fulcrum Gaming in route down the 5 6 line. Godzilla mode. Work on your scouting, buddy. You missed something there. Huge blind spot, only spotting out to Doma. Jackie Rudo gets actually taking a hit on his opening First scout. First blood run. again against Fulcrum Gaming. Wow. Not a kill yet, but Bananas the Wall host takes some hits. Where is he? Oh, he's down to 379, taking hits from way downtown. This is an interesting Fulcrum opening. They are in a fantastic position to snipe their opponents. I like this. I yeah. like it, Fulcrum. We haven't seen this. Some good return fire into that T32. Now, that T, the, those two T69s in the Pershing have some pretty good American view range. Nagatron takes a hit against his tracks, though. That one did penetrate another hit against him. And Bananas to the Wall Host is the other tank that has been hit. Where is his location on the map? Uh, bananas to the Wall Host. He was all the way in the west, almost on the two line. When, even when he was taking hits, he got spotted out by Jackie Ruto in the opening run. Members of Fulcrum getting into their uh, intended position were able to just snipe him out because he was on the high ground. He was very exposed, and he went down to 379. Wow. Yeah. Well, he's going to be low, but... Still enough HP to do some damage on his side. T69's up on the crest of the hill. Nice shot from Nagatron taking down Victorocious, AKA Boxer. He's now boxed up in a crate. And he's buried in the ground there. Oh, Running, wow. 1045, getting unloaded upon by the T69's here. Bounces happening, amazing. T32 T armor getting those crazy bounces. Soviet, by the way, is in the southeast, and I don't think he's he has been spotted by Angel of Darkness. Yes, he has been, he has been spotted. Getting some fantastic snipe shots probably into the back of probably Yukabu and maybe even a shot or two into Rummy. I don't think so for Rummy, but Yukabu is down to 660, and uh, and that hurts for a T69. I think a quick engagement by Fulcrum, if they can pull it off right, could probably clean this up now, but it would be uh, it would be a very costly engagement. Hugo Maximus down to 1170. Uh, these help points getting evened up a little bit. Uh, Catfast Nation showing some real skill last match. Or battle. Yeah, is, now, Soviet's finally going to go in. They hesitate a little bit too long here, especially with those turrets that are placed up against Fulcrum Gaming. Now, there's one shot for the T32, looked like from Rummy, and that one bounced off here. Uh, at least was close enough to have Soviet's crew say something. Soviet's going to creep in closer, and this T32 is going to be a goner here. Soviet is going to push up, but at what cost, though? It's he not going to be that damage. costly, apparently, because he didn't take any hits when he crossed the most open approach to his position. Uh, Angel of Darkness had him spotted the entire time, and he will continually spot him as Soviet does crest periodically to spot members of Cat Fast Nation. A push, though, coming out on game is rigged because Relics is coming in hot and puts in plenty of damage into Game is Rigged, even killing his commander and then getting behind Game is Rigged so he cannot back off, eventually going down. The sacrificial play by Relics leads to a 1390 being destroyed. A beautiful trade of a T1 for a 1390. That is like a pawn taking up the queen. Jackie Rudo's going to push in now in his 1390. And he's going to get behind these tanks. Beautiful turret break happening here from Soviet and Jackie Rudo, keeping the T69 occupied. And now Fulcrum Game is going to push to the south as only two tier 8 tanks are left alive to defend their flag and their section of the map and those two tanks are angel well three tanks angel of darkness and the t1 godzilla mode in the 1390 and bananas to the wall host 
in the 1390. Soviet lands a great shot on the move against Godzilla. One more hit, he will go down. Is it Soviet's able to land it? It is, with an ammo rack to boot. And now only one tank is left that can do any damage, significant damage. And that is bananas to the wall host. And one more shot from any of these tanks will destroy him. Looks like he was almost tracked there and a shot and a miss. But Dodoma gets a cleanup shot. Soviet crashes into the tank. And now we have a 2-1 to one in favor of Fulcrum Game. Wow. Taking a look at tanks. Two 5100s, three IS-3s for Cat Fast Nation, a single 5100, three IS-3s, and an AMX 1390 for Fulcrum Gaming. I love this lineup out of Fulcrum Gaming. And that was the stats of Fulcrum on this map. I want to thank our production team for bringing that together. Better detailing the story of these different teams here as they're one step closer to Vegas, depending on this win, at least for Fulcrum. And Ensk is a really balanced map. It's, it goes pretty much dead even, 15-14. Uh, and, and that's that's incredibly close. That just shows that this map is a strong choice no matter what side you are because we've seen the results, at least the results prove. I mean, some teams may argue, but I think that comes down to map knowledge more than it does to anything else. Numbers don't lie unless you ask a woman how old she is. The Doma is going to go up in this crow's nest approach. You will see a couple of IS-3s along that road, but is the road less traveled by by some of these tanks? It's a pretty common road to take. <laughs> it is. And uh, to dome up on the, on the high road back down because he doesn't want to risk taking hits from game is rigged. Or Yukabu, who are both looking straight down the three line, just straight down there. Dodoma could risk taking two hits and only putting out one that could, you know, on a chance. And, and he's going to get spotted. No, he's not. Okay. No, he's not going to get spotted at all. He was able to spot those IS-3s, but I couldn't. Uh, did I'm not surprised. See if he was spot on his side. He, he could, was not. I was. I was expecting him to get spotted. I was sitting there watching your screen, yeah. and I'm saying, Dodoma's going to get spotted. He might take a hit, and then no, negative. I, he wasn't. He was yeah. not. And Nagatron will lead his team in this 1390, not using an object 416, which I find intriguing here because we've seen him perform very well. Angel of Darkness gets completely well, he's annihilated. He's a fantastic 1390 driver as well, and it's so much more mobile. It's got a fantastic little clip, and uh, you see right there Nagatron taking out a T1, and he has gone dark. Now he's probably just going to begin it, trying to break down. So he breaks down some wall. Nagatron knocks on the wall, and nobody answers, so he busts it down. But Yokobo is spotted. Hugo Maximus is also spotted. Nagatron has actually made it easier for some tanks to get spotted. And Nagatron will put out a shot. And he gets he... hit. 7, 10, 11, 100. That was a solid hit coming from one of those IS-3s. Yeah, that's not but the kind of at, trade you want. Look at the position, though, of Fulcrum. They can go for the flag. And they will to try to bait out the rest of Cat Fast Nation here. Yeah, Cat Fast Nation is responding, but they're moving south. Uh, Yukubu, Bananas, the wall host, Rummy, Godzilla Mode are moving south. Yukubu recognizing, oh, wait, they're, they're up north. I better turn around. And there's a flank, an interesting flank coming out of Folk, out of uh, Cat Fast Nation, but Fulcrum is pushing straight in on Game is Rigged. Soviet and the IS-3 is going to meet on the aggression on one of these fire alleys. And who will he see first? He's actually going to be right in between Bananas of the Wall Host and a potential flank coming from Godzilla mode, but he has taken a lot of damage. Soviet takes a hit. Looks like the one he tried to fire did not go through. Rummy takes down to Doma. Yeah, Dodoma was crossing in the open just behind where you see Soviet now, and he just gets wasted. Also, Hugo Maximus squared off against Godzilla mode. Godzilla mode taken down to 45 hit points. Yuku having to come to his aid while Nagatron may be able to flank in just a second. Hugo, recognizing this, takes down Godzilla mode and is going to stop. Yukubu from moving anywhere. Nagatron should be coming in momentarily. Well, so is Jackie help. Rudo to help as well in the 5100. And now he's pushing Yokobo into this side of the building here. Shots are going to fire from both teams. High roll, and Yokobo is going to be a little more devastating for Hugo. But he decides to shoot into Jackie Rudo. Why? He could have taken down Hugo Maximus. And it's I, I feel like that is a mistake. You want to get those kills because guess what? Backup is coming. Rummy and Bananas of the Wall Host are going to join this fight. And Nagatron is finally going to fire. Although Bananas is going to ram Nagatron, dealing a oh wow! A <laughs> large amount of damage, taking down to 67 hit points. And Nagatron is able to get that kill. Bananas of the Wall Host at 781 is gonna face Nagatron. One shot takes him down. Hugo is able to track Bananas of the Wall Host, but Jackie Rudo is waiting for Victor Rocious. He gets the kill against the T1. 
F-Zero-X went all the way to the south to try to stop any type of fire movement, but that's it! Fulcrum Gaming wins their final match of WGLNA Season 2, and they will finish out the league 6 and won a 3 to 1 victory over Cap Fast Nation. I have to applaud Cap Fast for making Fulcrum work for that victory. Especially that was a on the last swift. One. Yeah, especially on the last one. That was a swift turnaround going instead of meeting that aggression towards their flag going down to the south and coming back up. I thought that was smart. It was it was way closer. That's here's what Nagatron's saying right. He's saying that was way closer than it needed to be. Every single fight went pretty I mean, there was only about one of them that didn't go uh, that didn't go evenly at all. Negatron is probably pretty uh, pretty heated right now with his guys. It's uh, Ensk could have been a loss. We could have seen Game Five for Fulcrum Gaming against the team that didn't perform at all well in this season. Well, Cap Fast Nation, they found some footing with Boxer or with whoever that was joining them. It must have to, been him to put on some better engagements. And if this continues, if this trend continues with them as they do move on to the relegation matches or however they want to qualify for season three, I say they could be a better contender for season three. But for now we must bid adieu to Cat Fast Nation and the boxer and also Victor Rocious and the rest of the teammates of Cat Fast Nation. Say so thank you for playing guys. Hopefully we'll see you in the next season. But I also want to get some more thoughts here from Pub Whisperer. Were you surprised on the performance of Cap Fast Nation, or was just Fulcrum not 100% tonight? That last match, uh, Fulcrum had the overmatch we saw on that 1IS3. It, I feel like they took a little bit too much damage closing that distance, um, but we did see them once again, uh, Cap Fast gave up most of the map control to Fulcrum, and I think that's what finally lost it for him. Now, in that scenario, as simple tankers, if you would look at your thoughts and feelings of whoever is commanding you, probably Jay Smooth, Mm -hmm. um, would you have gone for the flag and set up a flag defense, or would you have continued the engagements against the tanks? Uh, as Fulcrum, I would have pushed through the flag. Um, as Cap Fast, they didn't have time to go to Cap. Uh, we saw the Tier 1 moving south. They would, uh, Fulcrum would have saw it, and they could have started Cap themselves. Um, you never want to go for the Cap, because that takes too long, typically. You want to push through it and kill the other tanks okay. and force them to turn around. It's pretty open. There's a lot of different avenues of fire, even yeah. from one direction even from the yeah. west going into the east there's multiple lanes that these tanks can't appear mm -hmm. and uh, you can get a lot of shots taken against you and and we've seen a couple of tanks do that but we've also seen some great play of hiding those t1s around yeah that uh, ruin around yeah. the rubble yeah there's a nice the north has a i think a really comfy uh rubble pile to use whereas <laughs> the south has some train cars and those train cars are nice and all but they're so easy to shoot under these pros can use that so well We've seen great shots on the rubble pile, but the rubble pile is, is a really nice, comfy thing to use to hide some T1s. Put a 5100 right there into the rubble pile. You have an almost invincible uh, T1 position that's very difficult to assail. Uh, although, Ensk, uh, you're looking at some stats there. I am. I am. So, real quickly, the stats that we have on Ensk mm -hmm. uh, before tonight's matches, of course. North wins 15, south wins 14 times, hmm. and then one draw. So, it's almost pretty balanced. Of course, this is dependent on... Uh, the performance of the teams as well, but it's almost 50-50 just with one draw instead of a south win. Average duration of the map is actually 4 minutes and 49 seconds. Average kill, 2 minutes and 37 seconds. Times played, 30 times. Uh, uh, no, excuse me. Yes, 30 times. This is the second most played map, the number one played and map. And this season only Simple one story. draw, man. How can one draw on ends happen? It happens. I it just... Last season, you, you <laughs> would have laughed on at one draw on Ensk. Yeah, and I was right. Prohorovka and Steps are the most drawn maps. Let's go ahead and jump into an interview with the man, the myth, the legend, Agatron, who is going to be joining us in Las Vegas. David, how do you feel? Hi. You're, you're muted. More we have him muted. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Okay. <laughs> how do you feel? I feel speechless. <laughs> uh, I feel pretty good. Um, obviously, we are still working some stuff out today. I thought, out of anything, though, Capfast Nation played excellent today compared to their usual. Uh, typically, Friction has been making the call since he moved to T1, and um, I'm, it hasn't even been in my brain. So I had to take back over today, and uh, we messed up a little bit here and there, but... Overall, I think our new setup, our new style, our, our new formats are really working for us. So feeling good, excited to go back to Vegas. Uh, always a pleasure to hang out with you guys. So, 
were you feeling the tension on Ensk right at the end there? That was incredibly close. Do you think it was closer than it needed to be? Yeah, <laughs> by a long shot. So much closer than it needed to be. Uh, partially, I think I could have done a little bit better managing where people went. Um, I think some people chose to go paths that were not intelligent for them. <laughs> and uh, really what it boils down to is just looking at the stats. Cap Fast Nation, every single shot they hit penetrated for damage. And that's, that's a big deal. We did not meet that expectation today, but uh, we'll get better. We've got plenty of time to Vegas, and, and we'll, we'll figure it out. I'm just happy that it wasn't a, a slaughter in any way. I mean, I'm, I'm always for better matches in the league. I'm also happy we didn't lose, so don't get me wrong there. Because in turn, it makes you better, makes all the teams better when you do have evened up play compared to just a 3-0, which, quite frankly, a lot of people were expecting tonight, just on the track record of Cat Fast Nation. But... I agree with you, David. They did perform a lot better than we thought they would, and I am entertained by the surprise that we saw. But you did mention you have some time before Vegas. What will your team be doing before Las Vegas when it comes to training, practicing, and preparing for the Season 2 Finals? Practicing a lot is really what it boils down to. Um, we've been a little bit distracted with, uh, speaking of distractions, We've been a little bit distracted with some <laughs> some other stuff that we've had going on lately, uh, but we should be able to buck buckle down, focus on Vegas, and make sure that the people who are going to be playing get a lot more reps than they have right now. I think part of what we had going on today was people in new roles, people uh, who aren't used to playing live, playing with us yet, and uh, I think all this kind of culminates and comes together as... You know, it's a very complex thing. People need to have the faith that that guy's going to do his job right. He needs to feel that they have the faith that he's going to do the job right. It's all, it's all very tenuous, and uh, everything needs to come together to play the way we want to play. Our strats are very delicate, and they are easily messed up if we aren't 100%. But if we're 100%, they're very difficult to beat. So we're just going to try and brush that up and get to 100%. Is there any news about Fulcrum Gaming that is around the corner we should be expecting to hear or at Vegas and is there anything you'd like to say to your fans that have supported you and will be rooting for you at Vegas November 16th and 17th as for the former question yes but when we are ready to tell you that we will tell you that um, another complex thing a lot of moving parts going on in that as for our fans, a pleasure as always. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for supporting us. If you're in the area or if you're relatively in the area, come out to Vegas. Check it out. It's always a lot of fun watching these teams play live. Everybody picks it up another level, and no matter what happens, we all get to go out and gamble and have fun. Then. That's right, David. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, congratulations on being the top team in your division, and we'll see you in Las Vegas. Thanks. Take it easy, guys. <laughs> All right. Nice oh. work by Fulcrum. And again, nice work by Cap Fast Nation. I am impressed by you guys. And with Boxer leading you, maybe we'll see a more fruitful Cap Fast Nation in Season 3. It certainly was fantastic play. Uh, Pub Whisper, anything else you'd like to add before we take a break? Uh, no, those are great games. I'm looking forward to the rest of the night. Are you intimidated at all by Fulcrum Gaming at Vegas? No. Uh, hopefully we'll have good games like last season. You did. And take them down to seven again. My favorite series. My favorite series from season one finals. Let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break. We come back, ladies and gentlemen. Hammer Time versus the Cazadores. This is the final day of group play for WGLNA season two. Don't go anywhere. World of Tanks esports action continues after this.